The life sciences have undergone the most spectacular revolution in the past 25 years. This revolution has taken our understanding of living systems from the level of cells and organisms down to the level of individual molecules and genes. This revolution has been multi-pronged and what it has provided us with is the sequences of whole genomes, so the actual information coded in a living system, plus an understanding of the proteins, the individual macromolecules that make up a living system. So from an outsider's perspective, when you think of living systems and physical understanding, you think of ooze and goo. But the proteins that make up a living system are basically little solids of the dimensions of nanometers and they act as molecular machines. And so the molecular biology revolution has been an entree for physicists, chemists, mathematicians, engineers to start grappling with living systems at the level of these macromolecular machines. And the first thing that we need in order to understand how these systems work is to actually have a blueprint, the three-dimensional structure of the individual machines and components. And because they are machines, they actually normally have not just a single structure, but several structures. And so the structures would map out the different things that the molecules can do in their action as motors, as rotary motors, as pumps, as gates that open and close. So what my research group is involved in is using all the tools of modern um, life sciences to try and understand individual proteins as molecular machines and understand how they work in living systems. So our goal is to try and map the atomic structures of these nanomachines and then to map the different structural states that they can adopt so that we have a full understanding of the structure and the dynamics of these molecular machines and molecular systems. Then we work in close collaboration with medical scientists and biological scientists to put these back into context to try and understand what is it that these 3D structures are telling us about the biology? Um, or what are they telling us about disease states or normal states in human systems? The spin-offs of this kind of biophysical research are quite far-reaching. My own lab is basically interested in understanding fundamental questions. But clearly once you have a map of a macromolecule and you know how it moves around, you can use that for biotechnology to try and use the ideas and systems of molecular biology to do something technological, or you can use it in medical applications. We're working with proteins involved in inflammation, and by understanding the 3D structure, you can move to a rational drug design. We design small molecules that will either correct for faults within the protein, or switch the protein on or off selectively, so you can use it for therapeutic applications. The other things that are happening from this kind of work is a different understanding of physics itself. Because for the first time we can actually watch molecular systems on a nanoscale and see how they operate as machines and motors. And the principles by which these motors work are based on our current understanding of physics. But there are new types of physics coming from this in that we've never before had the ability to observe such systems in such detail. So this sort of covers this area of molecular biophysics that my group is involved in.